Hello everyone and welcome to Meet MIPS Improvement Activities with Raider 8. In this mini webinar, your hosts, Randy Marsden, President of Marsden Advisors, and Hugh McLaren, Senior Solutions Consultant with Raider 8, discuss how your practice can easily meet two patient satisfaction improvement activities. Before we begin, our legal statement here is that this presentation is for informational purposes only. Uh, there are actually MIPS-related improvement activities that help support patient satisfaction. We have two recommended activities listed here. Uh, the first one, collection and use of patient experience and satisfaction data on access. This is a medium-weighted activity, and the objective here is to develop an improvement plan informed by patient experience and satisfaction data, including any differences across demographic groups so that eligible clinicians can use data-driven approaches to improve patient access and quality of care. So if you are collecting patient uh, experience and satisfaction feedback and developing an improvement plan to act on that, especially accounting for any differences in demographic groups, then this is a very easy activity to meet. Another activity, which is actually a high priority, is a regularly assess patient experience of care and follow up on findings. The objective of this activity is to improve patients' experience of and satisfaction with care by gathering and applying learnings from relevant data to make care more patient-centered. So it is very similar to the other activity, uh, as long as you are regularly assessing the patient experience and you have a routine and you're keeping that consistent and you're applying what you're learning from that feedback to how you impact overall patient care and making your patient care more patient-centered, then that's a great activity to meet as well. For both of these, like I mentioned, the key is consistency and, and doing this across the board and keeping up with it and monitoring it and tracking it, which doing this manually can be very difficult. Uh, luckily, there is a program like Breeder 8, which beyond just the MIPS activity requirements, helps you improve your overall patient uh, reputation and satisfaction on various sites, uh, including Google. So I'm now going to hand it over to Hugh McLaren from Raider 8 to show you the platform, show you how that works, and then we'll come back over here and show you how to apply what you do in Raider 8 to meet those MIPS improvement activities. Take it away, Hugh. Hello, everybody. This is Hugh McLearn with Raider 8. I am a senior solutions consultant. I'm happy to speak with you today. Um, this presentation shouldn't take too long. It should be about 10 minutes or so, and then we'll uh, do some Q&A afterwards. Uh, so as Randy has mentioned, um, Raider 8 is a healthcare-specific reputation management company. So what that means is that we only work in the healthcare space. And what we do is we help groups, practices, hospitals, healthcare systems, uh, make sure that they have a great reputation when patients are searching for them. And also, as Randy has mentioned, we also do patient satisfaction surveys. So in order to meet those MIPS measures that Randy has discussed, uh, we give you the tool to give your patients surveys about their experience. Then we give you some really cool tools to look at that information and uh, make decisions to improve uh, the patient experience. So let's jump into it. It's pretty easy stuff, and um, hopefully you will see some cool things today. So first off, just wanted to start here. This is the Raider 8 dashboard. So with Raider 8, you will have a dashboard where you'll have all of your physicians and locations and listings. You'll be able to see all of the internal as well as the external feedback that you're getting from our reviews and surveys coming into here. Uh, but really, I want to start with the patient experience. So when you think about it, uh, when we're talking about the patient surveys and meeting those MIPS measures, really what we want to do is we need to give the patient a way to leave feedback uh, about their patient experience. And so what we do is we will um, integrate into your practice management system. Really, it's just a simple appointment report. We just want to know what the completed appointments are. We'll take that information, and then that's what we use to send either a text or an email to the patient to ask for that uh, feedback. And so this is an example of what the survey might look like here. So you can see the patient gets an email. Uh, you can see the physician that the patient saw that day. And then all it's saying here is tap for a rating. So it's just a one click for the patient. It'll tap on a star here. 
And then what we do is we open up what we call a micro survey. And this obviously, as you can tell, I'm on my computer, but this is all mobily optimized. So if you're on the, if the patient's on their cell phone, it's easy for them to read and tap and fill this out. But typically what we'll do is we only want to give the patients about four questions to answer. So you may have 10 or 12 questions total about the patient experience that you want to get feedback on. What we're going to do is we're going to randomize it for each patient and only show them four questions. And we do that for response rates, right? If a patient sees, you know, 10, 12 questions, sometimes they get overwhelmed. They're like, no, that's going to take too long. I'm not doing it. And they won't fill it out. So we want to make it easy for the patient. So what they can do is as they go through this little survey, they can click on a star rating and then it opens up a comments box. So they can leave a comment about each aspect of the experience that they're being um, asked about, which is nice. Um, the other thing that we do have available, because this is an anonymous survey, if they tap, let's say, something less than three stars, when they go to submit this review, what will happen is they'll get a little pop-up, and that pop-up will say, hey, we strive for five stars. Would you like to share your name and email? And then the point of contact at the practice will get an alert that a patient has shared that with them, and it gives you an opportunity for service recovery. So that's really as simple as it is. Um, once the patient has filled that out, all that information is coming back into the Raider A dashboard here. And this is where we really give you some neat tools to understand this information. So you can see in the dashboard, you'll see this Raider 8 logo. That's going to be a comment that was left on that internal survey. But beyond that, what you can do is we have what we call a benchmarking tool. So here in the benchmarking tool, these are all the questions that this practice asks. And you can see here, this is their average. Uh, rating that they're receiving on each one of those questions. Well, what we do is we also benchmark that, right? It's one thing to know if you're doing good, but how does that compare to others? So it defaults to the rate or rate benchmark. That's for all of our clients. That's the average rating on the question. But oftentimes in ophthalmology, you're going to want specific to ophthalmology. And so what we can do is then have a benchmark for just our ophthalmology clients. So we've got about 30 to 40 different um, ophthalmology practices across the country that use rate or rate. And so this is the ophthalmology specific benchmark, but you can also have benchmarks for your city or your region or similar sized practices. So it really allows you to um, compare in a meaningful way. The other thing that's nice is if you have multiple locations, you can click the location filter and then I can see how is my check-in experience differing across my different locations. And then beyond that, you can say, okay, well, this one seems to be a little lower. Let's, let's look at the comments. And so what the system will do is it will open up and show us the comments that are specifically related to just that question at just that location. So hopefully here this uh, internet connection will speed up for me and it'll show me the information. There we go. Um, so you can see here, it'll just show me the comments that are just related to that location. So if there's anything I need to understand, you know, that's happening differently there, it's easy for me to get to that, that data. This is all exportable to an Excel file. Um, so if you know you needed to show any proof for attestation reasons, uh, you can export that. You can also show different things like response rates. So if you needed to export to show how many surveys you sent out and how many were returned, um, you can get that information pretty quickly. So that's kind of how the surveys work. Now, Beyond surveys, what Raider 8 is really good at is helping practices to make sure that their online reputations are great. And what I mean by that is when patients are searching on Google for best ophthalmologist near B or best medical practice near me, that your group has the highest reputation with the most reviews. That's really what we're going for. The other thing that we look at too is it's important not only for you to have a good reputation on Google, but also the other sites like Health Grades and Vitals and WebMD. And it's mainly because we don't want to give patients any reason to think that, you know, the provider looks good on Google, but what are, why are they only one star on health grades? So what we do that's really different than any other uh, company is we've developed an algorithm. And so what happens in the algorithm is the patient gets that email or text, and then they just click rate your experience. And so when they click rate your experience, what our system does is it looks at all the listings, right? Because your doctor has a personal listing, there's a location listing, and then all the other personal listings for the provider. What we do is we set goals in the background for each one of these listings. And then before the patient even clicks, our algorithm looks at the real data. So real time, what do all these listings look like? 
And so in this scenario or this example, you can see that the goals for the location listing are all being met. So what the algorithm is automatically going to do is it's probably going to send to the personal listing because we're not, um, we haven't had a review in over seven days. So it's been 10 days. So we want to make sure we get a review on that listing. So it'll automatically direct the patient to that listing. And so what that looks like for the patient, similar to the survey email that they might get, they just click one time and then the system is automatically going to figure out where that review needs to go and send the patient to that listing. So the easiest way I explain that is what Raider 8 does is it sends the patients to leave the review where it's needed most and makes it really easy for them. And so the byproduct of that, there's a little handy report in Raider 8, we call this the online review scorecard, is when you look across like this group who's been using Raider 8 for a couple of years now, you can see that all of their listings look really great. Right, there's no discrepancy in any of these. All of their doctors have great reputations. All their locations have great reputations with tons of reviews. And that's really kind of the goal of, of our service. Um, other kind of nifty things that Raider 8 can do for you. Um, we do a testimonial widget. So all these really great five-star reviews that you're getting, we wanna make sure that those can be viewed easily for the patient outside of just Google. And so we can do a testimonial widget on the provider bio page. So you can see here on Dr. Nam's page, we can see um, this testimonial widget populating all those five-star reviews um, right there within your own website. And that's a really easy just piece of code that we would give to your web developer to embed there. Um, of course, in Raider 8, the other thing that you're going to be able to do is, you know, see the, you know, results that you're getting. So understanding kind of how is the distribution between five stars and one star reviews, how many reviews are you getting, what kinds of reviews, what sites are they coming from, that's important. And then lastly, the other thing that, you know, we make easy for you with Google is you're able to respond to Google reviews directly out of the Raider 8 dashboard. So Google loves to see when uh, businesses engage with their Google listing. And so this way, it's really easy for you to just open up the dashboard. You have all of your listings loaded in here, and you can respond to those Google reviews directly out of the dashboard. So hopefully, um, you know, this demo is really quick today. I'm happy to schedule more time with, with anybody who wants to kind of schedule an appointment. But um, if you have any questions, please ask them in the Q&A section. And it's been really great talking to everybody. Thank you so much. Now let's go over how to implement these activities and how to use Raider 8 to meet them. For the collection and use of patient experience and satisfaction data on access, this is looking for collecting patient experience and satisfaction data on access to care and development of an improvement plan, such as outlining steps for improving communications with patients to help understand uh, urgent access needs. The validation documentation is available on the QPP resource library site uh, it's hidden deep in an Excel file, uh, but we've made that easier by putting that on our Valview website, which we're including in the chat right now. The validation documentation is really important to be looking at for any activity that you choose. This uh, we often find practices aren't aware of this, but this act, uh, the validation documentation tells you exactly what you need to have prepared in the event of an audit. So when you're testing yes to an activity you are basically saying that you have all of this available. So even if it's not these activities, make sure you check that and you can check those on our Bellevue site uh, for any activity to make sure you have the right information ready to go. So for this, you'll need a documented improvement plan with goals for access to care and quality based on patient experience and satisfaction data. You'll need both of these elements. The first is patient experience and satisfaction data on access to care. So this is data collected through a patient experience survey. For example, uh, eligible clinicians could give this to a survey, the survey to all patients that were seen during a certain period or a certain location. Uh, the data can be prepared in any useful format or as they were collected. The second item is an improvement plan. So this is documentation of an improvement plan, which should include specific activities, goals and outcomes for addressing access to care. For example, in looking at the check-in experience rating by location that Hugh showed, you may identify one location scoring lower than the other. In reviewing the comments, you find that the issue is with wait time. You would then implement an improvement plan, such as adjusting schedule templates, adding additional clinicians or staff uh, to the location, 
You can then use Raider 8 to reassess the changes as they're made to see if the access to care was improved as a result of these changes. So in summary, Raider 8 can help you meet that first element of gathering that data, but you'll still need to work on the improvement plan and track that separately. Uh, keep in mind that this activity is centered on access to care. Now, this activity, regularly assess patient experience of care and follow up on findings, is more broad than just access to care. The uh, validation documentation for this one is also available on our Valview app, and we'll link that, which is coming straight from the resource library, library data. So for this activity, you're collecting and following up on patient experience and satisfaction data. This activity also requires follow up on findings of assessments, including the development and implementation of improvement plans. To fulfill the requirements of this activity, you'll use surveys like the CAP survey, advisory councils, or any other mechanisms. The clinician may consider implementing patient surveys in multiple languages based on the needs of their patient population. For this uh, validation documentation, you only need two of the three elements listed here. The first is a report of patient experience and satisfaction. The report uh, it includes patient data on patient experience, satisfaction. Like I mentioned before, it can be a survey result and you may use a third party administrator. So for this one, that you should be able to get from the Raider 8 dashboard. The next item is follow up on patient experience and satisfaction. So this would be documentation outside of Raider 8 that you've implemented changes based on the results of the patient experience and satisfaction data gathered or analyzed, which could be specific improvements made to practices and processes in response to the survey results. Or you could have a patient experience and satisfaction improvement plan, which is documentation of what you would do to improve. So both two and three look pretty similar, but just keep in mind item two would be as if you actually were able to make the changes during that time frame and that you were able to follow up on results. Whereas the third option would be putting together that plan of what you are going to do and that uh, actually implementing those changes may follow. So an example here, let's say a practice offers patients the option to fill out a questionnaire after their visit using Raider 8, for example. The practice finds that there's multiple complaints about a clinician, including poor listening skills and a tendency to rush in and out of the room so fast their questions are not answered. The practice creates an educational plan for that clinician and also identifies and addresses environmental issues or provides support to address personal issues that lead to the eligible clinician to feel pressure to rush through the patient visits. The report of patient experience and satisfaction data can come from Raider 8, and that follow-up or improvement plan would be based on those findings. This example, by the way, is an exact example from the validation documentation. So using the validation documentation to identify what the, the meaning of this activity is, is crucial. And as you can see, based on what we looked at in Raider 8 and the ideas that we have for follow-up and plan, uh, it's definitely doable using both that platform and our prescribed improvement and activities. activities. So I definitely encourage you, if you haven't already, to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can visit this link, youtube.com uh, slash at Marsden Advisors, or you can look at Marsden Advisors on YouTube. We'll drop a link in the chat. Uh, we just did a presentation last month on the final rule for MIPS in 2023. So we have a much more detailed presentation, even going over specific measure changes that you'll want to check out if you're not aware. But you can also check out our blog. We have a final rule blog post there as well.